This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter and the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And this is the show where we talk with people in and around independent professional wrestling. And some people we talk about and and talk with in their first year. And then sometimes they're just going to be on pay-per-view. <laughs> and that's the only time we get to see them again. You know, we have, we have plenty of examples of that. You never know who we're talking to. That'll be that, that you know... I'll be bugging for tickets in a few years. <laughs> so, uh, but anyways, we got another one of those uh, 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 new people here today. Uh, but in the meantime, please go check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com and IndieWrestling.us. A lot of people we talk with are, of course, featured on IndieWrestling.us and IndieWrestling.network. Uh, but also on WrestlingMayhemShow.com, you can go check out uh, all the other podcasts, whether it be the Monday Mayhem Wrap-Up, which is barely about wrestling anymore, or the Wrestling Mayhem Show, or whatever else happens on Wednesday night. <laughs> Who knows at this point? Right. Used to be when I get interviews. Now I'm going to have to watch more wrestling. Oh damn! <laughs> content, <laughs> content, content. You know what? We, we, this is an aside, but what we should do, Scarlett. I mean, we will invite you the first one. We should yeah. just invite our guest over. We'll watch AEW and stuff, and then we'll interview somebody. Yeah, it have nothing to do with AEW, right? <laughs> yeah, we'll just build it all in. Right. Uh, but Scarlett is here with us, a part of the Fight Society. Yeah. And I believe a student. Well, no, that's my name. Uh, you're part of the Fight Society uh, Wrestling Academy mm-hmm. and and Angel Gate Wrestling as well. The yes. all women's promotion, the only all women's promotion in the Pittsburgh area. Mm, yes, yes. So uh, we did we did kind of give you a trial by fire by throwing you next to Ronnie Starks on the <laughs> Wrestling Mayhem show before we did this interview. That so. was amazing. <laughs> uh, but we like to start with a little bit of a get to know you question, a little icebreaker. What is your first memory of professional wrestling Mm, that's that's a good one um i would say oh i remember it was like it was like something really really funny to me it was santino morella and beth phoenix Mm -hmm. it was pretty much that it was um probably it was probably him them two versus trish stratus and john cena and that was probably yeah that was probably like my first lick of like real remembering stuff of wrestling but like um yeah and that was it and it it kind of (laughs) opened opened a lot of doors for me there i really liked it i really enjoyed it Mm -hmm. yeah it's kind of funny because especially what you're involved now we'll get more into that but like that was kind of a mixed tag intergender kind of situation right Yes. yes so you were kind of introduced to that concept right off the bat yes it was it was very exciting for me, especially me, a young girl looking up to you know, that's who I had to look up to at that time. Mm-hmm. I was I'm, I wasn't back in the Attitude Eras and the um, WCW <laughs> Nitros, you know. It, I'm with what was there then, so it was a uh, that Beth was your Phoenix. that was your that was your growing up. So so Beth, especially Beth Phoenix. What was you say? The uh, Trish was the other one, right? Yeah. So I mean, those were when I think about that era. They were probably the strongest representation of what I think we as fans wanted wrestling to be yeah. for women, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. It was um, back then. I was a big supporter of all the women. You know, mm-hmm. like I loved women's wrestling in general, and I never wanted people to talk bad about it. Mm-hmm. But um, like they showed the most moxie, the most you know the the full package. I would say, mm-hmm. like when it comes to being a female performer. And especially Beth, like, uh, I don't know. I'm all for power, obviously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. Definitely so. get into that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, showing, showing me at that time, it it was just perfect. It just, mm-hmm. it really set everything that I wanted to be. So, yeah. So, was that, I mean, was that, when you first watched that, was that something you were like, I want to do this, or was it pure entertainment? Did you settle into like 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 figuring out that this was something you could do? It was pure entertainment mm. at the at the time. It was pure entertainment because it was just like you know, oh, it's, they're giving the girls a shot, you know, to do something. <laughs> Look at that, that's nice. I know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, it it did evolve, and it's now a whole different breed. But um, 
yeah, uh, it it just it it helped me understand the sports entertainment side and some you know in mm-hmm. the bigger companies, you know uh, how you have to really put on a show, mm-hmm. and I I just grew up to love it as I watched over and over and over. So yeah. so at what point did you? Did it it say I want to be in there or how Mm -hmm. did you figure out, you know, that this was a thing that you could do? Oh, people are going to hate me. Uh Uh-oh, uh-oh, (laughs) uh-oh. This is where it gets controversial. Oh, man. It was, um, you know, I was a big, obviously, I was a big Shawn Michaels fan. Mm -hmm. And um, I just remember watching his documentaries and everything. I was like, I told my mom at 12 I'm going to be a wrestler. I was like, all right, bet. So (laughs) I was like... (laughs) So <laughs> you're like this is a pattern. I yes. got it. I, it's like yes. okay. I was like I'm going to do the same thing. Watch, and I did actually. I told my mom. I remember <laughs> I'm going to be a professional wrestler, and she obviously yelled at me. But it's <laughs> it's okay. You know, it all worked out in the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I really um grew to love it mm-hmm. after the age of twelve. I would say, and I was um keeping up with it. Everything like Mm -hmm. TNA, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, indie promotions and not in Pittsburgh, but like, like around the area and, you know, keeping my head, you know, in the door. So I knew what was going on. So you, you, you started just kind of having an awareness of everything. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Yeah, I tried to at that point. (laughs) As we say, and and I feel like this phrase, unfortunately, (laughs) is worn out. You were all in. Yes. 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 I was. So how did you discover, like, what was your first kind of insert to like, actually get in the ring then um well i don't know what what i really just said i kept telling myself i i know i'm gonna do this one day i know i'm gonna do it i did see a couple of live events like um you know of course i had watched wwe because Mm -hmm. that's what i grew up on Mm -hmm. and i went and saw wwe but um my real first looks i don't i don't know it was just i said i'm gonna do it and i went and did it so yeah (laughs) uh so you came up like i said through the fight society yes academy Mm -hmm. um you know obviously you were keeping an eye on things you were learning about things you're watching Shawn michaels documentaries you (laughs) you know which i'm sure you had an idea of like what was training in texas (laughs) or (laughs) something you know when you got in there you got in the ring you know whether it was taking your first bump or something you know what what was your kind of first thought when you like actually got to it (laughs) oh (laughs) what the hell (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it was like it was a real wake up call for me though. Yeah, it it yeah. was either you want it or you don't. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I had to really push myself and tell myself, you know, you know you want this. Mm-hmm. So why would you give it up? You know? Mm-hmm. You know, you have those moments where you're thinking, you know, this is a lot. It's a lot on you. It's a lot mentally too. But it's something that you gotta push through, you know. And I I just love the game. I just love doing it. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> uh, so, you know, as, as you went through, so, you know, we talked a little bit about Scarlet, yeah. you know, on, on, when we're on Wrestling Mayhem Show. I want to get a little deeper with that here. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a little teaser you know, mm. over there. So, <laughs> so tell is, w- w- it, Scarlet as a concept, was that something you were working through from the start or is this something that kind of developed over time as you were kind of learning in the ring? It was, it was a concept from the start. Mm-hmm. And I, I would say I, I'm building off of it. Because it was something actually that I, I won't say that I had in the back of my mind for a while, Mm -hmm. but I had it in the back of my mind for many years, I'll say, of me being an absolute destroyer. Mm-hmm. because that's who i am <laughs> See, and, yeah. and that's not you know you you, you mentioned your kind of influence of, of of you know somebody strong like beth phoenix right mm-hmm. you know yes um so there's not a lot of these kinds of characters yes in, in, in wrestling it seems exactly i think you found the other one yes that you've been feuding with lately <laughs> oh, <laughs> we'll yeah. talk about that too but oh yeah mm-hmm. uh, so so was, was this you know just kind of this is my inner personality that you're letting out, or is it just like, well, that's that's something I don't see out there. It's it's a little bit of both, mm-hmm. you could say. It's something that I haven't seen mm-hmm. like personally, and I'll say in a while. I was I have seen something like me, but you you're not me, you know. But mm-hmm. it's like, um, uh, you know, it's 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 just out there. I've I've tried to um make it into my own. You know, but, 
you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. She's a work in progress right now. Okay. So, yeah. Well, Scarlet as it is now. Yes. Uh, when when people maybe you know people haven't seen it in, mm-hmm. in action. Um, I haven't seen the, the the visuals. You know, yeah. obviously, we'll have some on the cover art for this this podcast. <laughs> uh, so, so what? How would you describe Scarlet to somebody that that hasn't seen you yet? Scarlet is an ultimate. It's just the ultimate. It's just, <laughs> just she is like literally. She's the embodiment of rage. Okay. So, if you see rage, what would you see? You would see Scarlet. Okay. Basically, so. It's just like, you know, you got to work off what she's good at. She's work, She works off the mind. She's mm-hmm. she's the ultimate. You, you don't know, but she got you in the psychological part. Okay. You, you think she doesn't. You think she doesn't have her, her mind under wraps of how wild she acts. But it's just, you know, you, you, you haven't peeled her back yet. Mm-hmm. You don't know her, you know? You don't know her yet. You don't know anything about me that I haven't told you yet. All right. And yeah. So some of the psychological there. Yeah. Speaking of that, you've worked a lot lately with somebody else that I think is probably one of the, I, I, I got to say in the last uh, a couple of years, one of the best psychological guys I've seen in round wrestling with Christian Noir. Yes. And I mean, you got to be learning a little bit from that guy. <laughs> yes. Yes. I learned a lot from <laughs> Christian. Yeah. 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 He's, um, he's out there. Yeah. He's <laughs> he's one of those guys. He's out there, <laughs> yeah. But uh, he's no, he's really a good guy. He's he's helped me a lot mm-hmm. through tough times in this industry. So I got to give him a lot of props. You know, he's 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 one. He's he's an OG. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, speaking of, we we talk about kind of that. You know, like I said the other the other brutal <laughs> wrestler out there yeah. I think about what you know is is Maxi Impaler uh, you've had I think two matches with her now in Angel Gate and they're all they're always like one of the you know we're used to like kind of women's wrestling is, is mm-hmm. it seems to be athletic yes. right and and that applies to you guys too but you right. guys have this brutal thing going on that you're I don't think we're seeing a lot in women's wrestling mm-hmm. mm. yeah yeah um. My mindset in any match is to destroy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's going to be as hard and as brutal as it's going to be because I, I'm out there to win. I'm not out there to make friends. Mm-hmm. I'm not out there to to joke around. It's, it's strictly business mm-hmm. when I'm in the ring. Mm-hmm. And I have one goal in mind, and that's getting my arm raised. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, we talked about it a little bit briefly on the other show, uh, but the, you you know, obviously with Angel Gate being a women's only promotion, mm-hmm. um, but generally I see you in intergender matches. Um, you know, as part of this this trios division that was happening for a while with Fight Society, mm-hmm. and and down to like having a one on one with Christian Noir mm-hmm. uh, a little bit ago. Um, you know, this has kind of been a growing trend with uh, independent wrestling these days. Some on TV too. Uh, how, how's it been uh, to be? Kind of a part of that and it seems like just to be the de facto standard for your home promotion yeah it's it's pretty wild it's pretty wild to see that i'm the standard but you know it's like you at that point you're like you know that it's me it's it's gonna be me you know you gotta do what you gotta do and working with guys it's it's a whole different feel than Mm -hmm. working with women you Mm -hmm. know you you gotta know what you're doing in the ring you gotta know what they're doing you know, you got to you got to be focused and um, being the standard for that in this promotion is is not nerve wracking, but it is uh, it's not even pressuring either. It's more like you got to stay up. You got to stay up. You got to stay on your mind. You got to mm-hmm. stay on your bread. You got to know what you're doing. So yeah, so you're mixing it up with you know when I, when I see like kind of women's divisions and, and promotions, mm-hmm. um, there's nobody that seems to be there that has the experience that you end up in the ring with, mm. you know, have, yeah. having that that set up at Fight Society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm fortunate enough to be surrounded by so much knowledge that it's it's almost it's almost easy. To not mess up, you know, it's 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 like you have to you you know who you're with. Mm-hmm. They know what they're doing, and they 
they obviously know what they're doing. And it's like, you know, you, you just got to keep your P's and Q's up too. You got to be at that same level, mm -hmm. you know, per, like mentally, I'll say, you know, I'm not going to say physically, like, I'm not going to say you, you're the best wrestler in the world, but you know, you got to work your, you got to work your ass off basically. And being in a promotion like Fight Society with so much talent, it's hard to get, it's so easy to get lost mm -hmm. in the shuffle. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, you gotta, you gotta know what you're doing, basically. So you're in at this yeah. point. Uh, what is the, uh, the best and the worst thing about indie wrestling for you so far? <laughs> the best thing is the fans. Mm -hmm. The best thing is making those fans angry. That's mm -hmm. what I love mm -hmm. to do. I love to work with anybody and just put on a show. But uh, man, there's <laughs> the worst, the worst thing. Um, um, I really don't have a worst thing right now. I'm pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Too early. Too early. Too early oh, you'll for find me. It. Yeah. You'll I'll find it. <laughs> come back to me in a couple months. We'll see. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And we'll have to see about getting you back on the show, yeah. get back on the Mayhem show. <laughs> uh, where can people find you online? Uh, three underscores dot I'm Scarlet on Instagram or on we, Facebook. We yeah. determined that we determined the underscores are for dramatic pause. Dramatic pause because I'm the most dramatic. Anyway, there you go. <laughs> anyway, and um, Scarlet Pro Wrestler on Facebook. There you go. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been awesome no to problem. see you. You know, uh, uh, film your matches over the last several months and uh, and and watch it grow in that too. Thank uh, you over the time. So look forward to see what's uh, next for uh, a year or two in your career. Thank you. I look forward to it too. Obviously. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Check out her. She's of course part of the Fight Society Angel Gate on a pay per view and streaming uh, very often. And you can find both of those over at pwnnetwork.com and indiawrestling.us and a lot of other people that we talk with, including episodes of this at indiawrestling.us with the Indie Mayhem Show. Uh, we've talked with a lot of people all across the industry and uh, you can dig in there and, and see some names you recognize if you're new to this uh, so thank you everybody uh, thank you for everybody uh, uh, live here on Facebook uh, subscribing to the show wherever that may be on iTunes or whatever other pat podcatcher or, or YouTube as well uh, until next time please support in the rest This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.